welcome to this session of open mentors we will talk more about computers the previous sessions we talked about the parts of the computers the need for computers the improvement towards input output devices etc now we are going to talk about the life of computers the life we strike it out write it again the life of computer pretty much the human being has a life the first thing is electricity so without electricity the computer cannot function so electricity is the one that gives the oxygen to the computers it's not literal oxygen i just mean it's an analogy but what gives life to the computer is the operating system os the operating system is the one that gives what the computer is the meaning for the computer so what is this operating system the physical parts in the computer are called hardware the physical parts like cpu you have the board chip scanner device etc they are all called hardware they are physical but when these have to interact with the human beings we have to give the input and it has to get the output who controls the hardware is this operating system the controller of the hardware and the one that takes input from human being transits that to the hardware makes the hardware to run function and then give the results back to the human being the in between coordinator is operating system if you see the operating system today you have got microsoft windows you got uh, unix you have a uh, linux then mainframe computers do have their own operating system then the cell phone operating system like ios so a lot of operating systems are available so the hard operating system is directly dependent on hardware some of the hardware like intel family you may use both windows and linux some processors you may not be able to load windows for example in an iphone you cannot load ms windows so it needs a separate os so the os gives life to the computer i hope this is clear now i have to give input to the computer so in what language i have to give that input for example if i have to talk to a human being we use natural language the natural language is like english or hindi tamil greek etc spanish these are all the ones that evolved based on the human being's evolution over a period of time and based on the civilizations but we have to give something to the computers for example a human to human interaction i know spanish if you do not know spanish if i talk to you in spanish the communication is not through same way a human to uh, a dog can this happen unless you know the language of the dog or cat or elephant or lion computer is lifeless so how can we talk to the computer in early days first at the beginning people used binary input binary input is called machine language the machine language is a stream of bytes zeros 1001 0, 0, 0, 
pretty much like you and I write in English. You say this is H-U-M-A-N, human, before people used to give input in terms of stream of bytes. But this is not understandable by human being. By reading these zeros and ones, you cannot understand, infer anything. So, what will I do? All I need to do is, I have to use something called assembly language. This assembly language is slightly better. It is English-like. It used to have commands, simple commands like uh, add, move, jump, right? So it has some basic commands like add, move, jump, etc., etc. But this is understandable. But if you just read one line, you may not be able to understand. You have to read a sequence of lines to understand what it means. So the assembly language scheme, people used to write in an assembly language, then use punched cards or paper tapes to give inputs to the computers. But this was not sufficient again. People started using something called high-level language. High-level language meaning what you see in today's world, like Fortran or COBOL or C, C++, Java, C Sharp, Python, Perl, etc., etc. These are almost like English. They are not English but they are pretty close to English. If you look at the COBOL language especially, you will see a line something like add A to B giving C. This is how a COBOL line will look like. So by reading this line in the program, you can understand what it is. So the evolution of languages did happen over a period of time. Let us take one step ahead. If you look at the languages, there are some similarities in every language. So a language is nothing but a medium of communicating to the computer. That's number one. Number two, it is easily understandable. If I'm not able to understand it, why should I write it? The third thing is, it is useful for others to maintain. The maintenance is a very very important factor in software. I write a program, I write some instructions to the computer, if I give it to another person, if that person is not able to understand it, there is no point. So it is always good that it is maintainable. So the languages are used to give instructions as a medium of communication, it is understandable by others, based on which we can easily maintain. These languages can be further divided into procedural and object-oriented. Object-oriented languages and procedural languages. Let me write it down. Object-oriented languages and procedural languages. There are some significant differences between these procedural and object-oriented languages, but we will see the, those things later. There are some common aspects across the languages. If you take any language, we are going to see different programming languages in the subsequent sessions. You can already see a lot of programming languages in OpenMentor. Some of the significant features in every language is, every language you see something called variable you will see something called if condition. You will see something called 
loops you will have functions or procedures you will also see something called parameters you will see file handling and db database handling so any language if you take whether it is c++ or java some of these concepts or i would say all of these concepts will not change uh, concepts wise but syntax wise it will change i use the word called syntax what do you mean by syntax in english you have something uh, called subject object predicate etc etc it's a rule or it is a grammar the english has its own grammar every natural language its own grammar so every language like c java c sharp everything has its own grammar the grammar for a variable in c will differ from the grammar of cobol for example in c you will say integer a semicolon this is one of the syntax that you see in c whereas in cobol the same thing will be defined as a picture 99 dot so this is the syntax of cobol this is the syntax of c but both of them mean that this variable a is an integer two bytes the syntax will differ from language to language for sure but the concept will not change the concept of if concept of loops parameters file handling database handling will not vary much what we are going to see in the subsequent sessions is more about the programming languages the interfaces and how the hardware side also evolved over a period of time thank you